Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea PS1B. It's on chemical reactions. Lots of times when we hear the word chemical reaction, we think of things like this. This is a thermite reaction. You have metal and a metal oxide that are combining. It's giving off a huge amount of heat, a huge amount of light. Um, but also inside me, there's a number of chemical reactions that are going on that are allowing me to think and to move and to speak. And so chemical reactions are incredibly important. What are they? They're essentially changes, changes in which atoms are rearranged, the bonds are broken and they're reformed again. And so some things we clearly think of as a, a chemical reaction, like the explosion of a firework. Um, but some things are just rearrangement of molecules. And so it's not a chemical reaction per se. For example, creating a solution or boiling water, you can return that to the way it was very readily. Um, but if we see a lot of gas, if we see heat being produced, then we know that a chemical reaction is occurring. An important concept that you should understand is the idea of conservation of mass. And so even though atom, the, the bonds between atoms are being broken and reformed again, there's a conservation of mass. And so this is the Hindenburg, that awful disaster. What was going on? We had the hydrogen gas inside the Hindenburg, which is great. It makes it light and it allowed them to float, but it's combining here with a spark with oxygen in the air, it's producing water, it's also producing a huge amount of uh, light and heat. And so we have a chemical reaction now. The hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas are reforming to make water, but the mass is conserved. In other words, let's balance this equation for just a second. If we were to take the mass of that hydrogen and oxygen before and after, it's going to be exactly the same. Um, and I'll show you a quick uh, demonstration of how you could do that in the classroom. Collision theory is really dictating how chemical reactions occur. What does that mean? Matter is made up of atoms, and those atoms are constantly in motion. Depending on the state of matter, you're going to have different amounts of motion. But the more motion we have, the more collisions we have, and the more reactions we're going to have. So how could we increase molecular motion just through an increase in temperature? Um, we also could concentrate the reactants to do that. And then all of those reactants are going to have a certain amount of potential energy. And depending on that, some reactions are going to move in one direction or another. And so where do you start as far as in, in teaching this? Well, at the early elementary grades, you want to talk about how changes in temperature can ch cause changes in molecules. And so, for example, boiling water, increasing it, is going to in increase the molecular motion. Um, what are we going to create when we do that? We're creating water vapor. Or if we were to freeze um, some of the water vapor in the air, we could get solid. So like snowflakes are that. But the kids should realize that both of these cases are easily reversible. In other words, if we were to just add a little bit of temperature to this, it's going to quickly turn back. It's going to melt, turn back into water. And then if we heat it up again, it could turn into water vapor like we would in boiling. But they should know this, that if you change the temperature, sometimes you get reactions that are harder to reverse. And so if you break bread, that looks a lot different than the dough did originally. Or if we had a flame, for example, that's going to be an increase in temperature to get that. But it's hard to turn it back into what it was before. So that's a good place to start, that adding temperature can, can definitely change molecules. As they move into the upper elementary grades, we should start with this idea of conservation of mass. And so what's the quintessential chemical uh, reaction that people have been doing from the beginning of time, it seems like, is mixing vinegar and baking soda. That's how you make that volcano uh, kind of overflow. And so what's a great way you could measure this? Well, let's do an experiment where you put a little bit of vinegar in a beaker. We put some of the baking soda in a balloon, and we take the mass of both of those to begin with. We then empty the baking soda in, we seal the balloon up, and we get a lot of bubbles going on inside there. It's not important that they know what chemical reaction is going on, but we could then take the mass of that when we're done. And it should be exactly the same as the sum of those two masses were to begin with. So the chemical bonds were broken and reformed, but the mass stayed the same. As we move up into the middle school, we should talk, start talking about atoms and how atoms will regroup and form. A great demonstration I like to do, even in my class today, is to take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, put it in a Ziploc bag with a little bit of yeast. That yeast contains an enzyme that's going to break the hydrogen peroxide down. What's it going to become? It's going to become two things. You're going to get water forming, and then we're going to have oxygen forming. So you'll get these little bubbles inside the bag. Now, it's a great time to talk about the energy because you'll feel that bag get warmer and warmer and warmer. So we know that a chemical reaction occurred, but we also know that there was more energy or free energy before in the hydrogen peroxide than there was um, after. So we release some of that energy 
what's going on here? Well, we're taking those atoms, breaking some of those bonds, and then we're reforming them. As we move up into high school, then we really want to talk about what reactions are occurring and how that rate can be manipulated. And so a great simulation that allows you to play around with this is at pht.colorado.edu. This one's called chemical reactions. And let me jump over to there and show you what I'm talking about. And so if we uh, look at this reaction right here, we have these reactants on one side. We'll say A is going to react with B and C, and that's going to form A, B, and C. And so how do we start this reaction? It's kind of like a pinball machine. Let me launch that molecule. And so you can see that we're switching forms. And so we're getting chemicals turning into other chemicals and then back again. And so eventually what will happen is that they'll start to move off of a line like that. And so if they don't run into each other, then we're not going to have that reaction. Um, how could we speed up or increase the chances of that reaction occurring? We could add a little bit of temperature to it. And as we add that, then we're more likely to bounce into each other and have a chemical reaction. But what do they have to do? They have to actually hit each other. I'm about ready to lose that molecule. If I slow it down, likewise, the molecules are going to be slower, so it's m less likely that they're going to bounce into each other. And so you could even play around with this in this simulation. Let's go to here. With the same kind of an experiment, what you can do is add some molecules, so add a bunch of A inside here. Now we're increasing that concentration. Um, now we could add a lot of B and C in here as another molecule. And you can see that they're all bouncing around, but we're not having those reactions go off. And so we've got a lot of concentration, but we don't have enough energy. So what can I do if I add the temperature? So if I increase the temperature, what's going to happen? They're going to bounce into each other, and we're going to get more of those reactions occurring. And so what we have is A and B, C turning into A, B, and C. Um, but it depends on the rate. If we slow that down, slow that molecular motion down, then they're not going to uh, hit each other. And so we're going to have less of those reactions. And so that's what chemical reactions are. Again, it's simple. They're just breaking of bonds between atoms and reforming again. But the progression you should teach it is starting with just this idea of change. And then we can eventually get into some chemistry when we get into high school. And I hope that was helpful.